it would almost it would be almost impossible to overstate how determined Whitman was to radically reimagine American poetry. And in 1855, when he self-publishes uh, Leaves of Grass, he r spends a significant amount of time and energy in a long, extended prose preface that precedes the poem. And in that preface, he lays out his vision of what poetry and the poet should be. And at one point when he's talking about what a poet is and what a poet should be, he has this wonderful description that I think is really directed also to everyone who reads his poetry. It's a, it's a mandate for a spirit of transcendental bond with the rest of humanity. And one of the things that's interesting about Whitman's transcendentalism is its motion outward, that uh, while transcendentalists see a truth that unifies all humanity, they mostly argue that you have to go within yourself to find it. You have to walk away from society and turn into yourself or see it reflected in nature, which is a reflection of your inner self. And yet neither Thoreau or Emerson is as comfortable diving into the world of people and action as Whitman is. And we can see that here in the language of this preface. And I am going to take a minute just to read it because I just think it resonates so beautifully and captures a spirit that, that I think is as much about mid-1850s bohemianism, which is the idea of sort of the more open lifestyle, the more open-minded cultural connectiveness that is really something that transcendentalism feeds into, but does not come directly from the early transcendentalists themselves. It, there's, a, there's a lot of Whitman that sounds more like a 1960s hippie and a lot of 1960s hippie that ha sounds like a lot more, uh, sounds more like Whitman. And that's why someone like a Allen Ginsberg is going to have such an affinity for Whitman. One of the great poets of the hippie era is going to have such an affinity to this 1850s hippie. Anyway, here we go. This is what you shall do. Love the earth and sun and the animals. Despise riches. Give alms to everyone that asks. Stand up for the stupid and crazy. Devote your income and labor to others. Hate tyrants. Argue not concerning God. Have patience and indulgence toward the people. Take off your hat to nothing known or unknown or to any man or number of men. Go freely with powerful, uneducated persons, and with the young, and with the mothers of families. Read these leaves in the open air every season of every year of your life. Re-examine all of you been told at school or church or in any book. Dismiss whatever insults your own soul, and your very flesh shall be a great poem, and have the richest fluency not only in its words, but in the silent lines of its lips and face, and between the lashes of your eyes, and in every motion and joint of your body. Just the idea, right, of the human body as a poem and the human life as a poem, but also that 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 element of self-promotion that's always a part of the Whitman story, the idea that he, uh, you know, go read this book again and again, read this book at least once a year, and you'll find your way. So there's a lot of fun stuff here, but there's also a lot of beautiful language here, and it's one of my favorite passages in American literature. It's one of the reasons that I can... Uh, endure Whitman when he gets into one of his out-of-control rant modes, which you're going to soon encounter, and still recognize his genius. All right. See you out there uh, in Song of Myself and in Blackboard.